Hi everyone, today I wanted to read to you my essay that I wrote for this week in my cultural anthropology class about racism and white privilege. I talk about two articles in this essay, and one of them is called White Privilege, Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack by Peggy McIntosh. The other one I referenced is called, let me see here. Civilize Them with a Stick, and that is by Mary Brave Bird, uh, along with Richard Erdos. In today's society in America, many people associate race with certain stereotypes and actions. I feel as if many people are ignorant about ethnicities and how they relate to people's racial stereotypes. With minorities, it seems as if a small selection of that race and their actions speak for the entire race. However, I think this relates to white privilege because of the idea that whites are not defined as a whole from school shooters, the Ku Klux Klan, and the Westboro Baptist Church, all mainly groups whose demographics seem to consist mainly of white people. Racism does still play a role in society today because as children in America, we are brought up on racial ideals, whether we are aware of it or not. Although I cannot speak from personal experience, just observations, it has been brought to my attention that multiracial children do not seemingly have a secure place in our American racial system. I feel this is a positive and a negative attribute of our society. Race does continue to play a role in our society today for a few reasons. My main idea is why race plays such a large role in our society it is that we are bred racism in schooling as children, like I saw in Civilizing with the Stick. America has such few options for choosing races on legal documentation. And three, the idea of white privilege and the wrongdoings of certain races against others in the history of our country, which we are taught in school. Children's public and even private educations are critical in the time of development of ideas and biases in children's minds. Molding these thoughts of racism, intentionally or otherwise, continues to feed and breed the ideas of racism in America. While reading Civilize Them with a Stick, it made me so sad and sick to my stomach that nuns in the Christian church thought so highly of themselves that they would take children from loving families only to beat them and force religion and prayers and even the concepts of clocks and time on these small, scared, impressionable children. This is an extreme example of religious extremists and white privilege. I say white privilege only because the author speaks about the nuns and the church fathers as only one kind of white persons. However, for many, especially those children, these are the only ideas about white people. I really love the phrase that the author states at the end of her passage. She says, racism breathes racism. The reason I say I love this phrase is because it seems to me that no one truly understands how truthful these words are. The racism these church people had against the Indians breeds the hate and racism that in turn the Indians started to have for the white people. It is the lack of love and acceptance that gives way to racism. And I believe that many Americans hold this fear and hatred within them to be racist. No one will ever let go of their childhood experiences and lessons on racism, and it will continue to be passed down unless something has changed. There is obviously still racism in today's society, and another reason is because North America only has about four main options for race to choose from. Although in my own experience, these are just the main four because I have seen more racial choices on documentations that I have had to fill out. These main four include 1. Caucasian or white, 2. African American or black, 3. Pacific Islander and Asian, and 4. Native American. As most people know, and everyone should know, there are more than just these kinds of races especially those who are multiracial. The idea that so many different races must choose other is quite sad and disheartening. The idea that entire groups of people cannot be recognized gives way to uncomfortable, unconfident, and alienated people because of their race and how they may not fit into the norm of their society, or so they think. I think that there should be a larger form in the way that the government forces people to choose from a small, incomplete list of races or else forced to choose other. There needs to be a complete list of all races identified in the world or no races to choose from at all. This is especially a problem for multiracial children. Children that come from two distinctly different racial backgrounds directly from their parents face a special form of alienation. Are they more one race over the other or does it depend mostly on how they look? 
and how are there two races seen throughout history and in their educational lives? I do think that multiracial children have a great benefit. They are able to see their racial story from multiple sides. With this special ability, they can advocate for more change to our racial systems and do it much better than anyone else who only fits into, quote unquote, one box of the racial dividing system. This is very important and gives me hope that someday these children who are being born more and more frequently will, say, will have the power and intelligence to get rid of our racism. They will also allow for the blending of different ethnicities and cultures and, uh, and allow their families and friends to know multiple cultures more in depth through them. White privilege in education is also a leading factor for breeding racism in our children, therefore passing it on to the next generation. The way our history is taught in schools is total and incomplete. There are people at the top of these education tiers that say what should and should not be taught in our school books. I am assuming for the sake of this argument that most of the people on the top of these tiers are white and white men to be more specific. Does it not seem ironic and completely unfair that these men are the ones that are shaping our future generations? They do not give complete and accurate accounts of all history that America and the world has truly been through. It seems to leave out the important information about different cultures and ethnicities and do not fully grasp the concept and the horrors that people have committed and felt throughout the world, throughout time. They also seem to breed right privilege because even though it is not taught specifically, children seem to catch on to trends and keep silent tabs on who is in charge, who is represented, and what advantages people of a certain color are given. Between all of these problems, I think that until these are changed or taken out of our culture, there will also always be some sort of racial component in our culture in America. I also think that breeding fear and hatred into our children will keep racism alive. I think it is important to accurately represent all races in history, education, recognition, and especially in those dumb little check boxes. With more love and understanding and open-mindedness, that is where racism will begin to fade from our American culture. Thanks so much. Be sure to subscribe and I'll keep you updated on all the things that I'm learning. Thanks.